moved to Texas a little over two years ago to become the senior minister here at this church. I'd only been here maybe 10 days when some folks took me across the way to Asta La Pasta for lunch. As we were finishing, a group of people from one of the side rooms walked by our table on their way out. One of them was Judge Adams. At our table, someone knew Judge Adams and invited him over, and we were introduced for the first time. He's a busy man. One of the other folks who was with him seemed rushed, a bit frustrated that he had been interrupted trying not so subtly, to pull Kent away from the conversation and toward the door. Another person from another table tried to get his attention, but he paused and asked me how things were going at the church. Now, you're not originally from Texas, he asked me, and I said, no, sir, I, I'm not. Well, where'd you grow up? And I said, Lincoln, Nebraska. Cornhusker country, he said to me. I said, yeah. I could tell that, again, the folks that were with him were trying to pull him away, pull him to the door. I'm sure he had a schedule to keep. I even tried to provide him an easy exit from the conversation. But he turned to me and asked, what was the best thing about growing up in Nebraska? To this day, I can remember that question. Because that's not the question you ask when you're trying to make a quick getaway, <laughs> when you're trying to slip out. Not at all. In that moment, this respected and clearly busy man took the time to be fully present to me as I answered that question. To me, that defined who that man was. In the 15th chapter of Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells a parable about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep, but loses one of them. And the shepherd chooses to leave the 99 for the sake of the one. One was important. And from that first encounter I had with Judge Adams and many other interactions I had with him, I met a man who cared about the one, cared about the individual, the person's life, the issues, the struggles, even what it meant to grow up in Nebraska. And the parable tells us that God cares about the one. And this day, my faith tells me that God's care for one man, Kent Adams, has not ceased with death. For God's love is greater than death. And echoing those words that Glenn shared just moments ago, there is nothing, no nothing in all of creation, not even death, that can separate us from the love of God. In just a moment, I will offer a word of benediction. But then I will ask for you all to remain seated as the family is dismissed. They will be taken across the way to our gymnasium where a reception is waiting. After they are dismissed, though, I invite you to join them there, for it is there that the stories will continue, the sharing and the celebrating of a life that was lived, a good life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we know that your love surrounds us, that your love encourages us. And we pray oh, de this day, O oh God, that your spirit will provide all of us your peace that surpasses all understanding. Gracious God, we pray now that this community of friends and family will continue to find your comfort and strength. We pray this in your most holy name. Amen.